Hi, this is Greg from Structural Toolkit, and in this video we're going to be going through some useful features you can use in the program. The topics we will be covering are general module functionality, which will range from using input cells, adding comments and customizing loads. Adding linked reactions from one member to another, which is a super useful feature when you have many beams or columns spanning onto each other. Converting timber to steel and vice versa. Member presets, which allow you to customize the default input values of each module. Member summary, which gives an exportable list of member sizes and spans for certain member types. This can be useful for filling out schedules on your drawings. And finally, the reaction summary, which gives an exportable list for all your member reactions. This can be useful for designing columns or footings. Have a look at the timestamps on the screen if you want to skip to any section. So when you open up any standard design module, you will see two main colored sections. The left white section, which represents the area that is printed and shows all critical values and inputs for a design. Then you have the right gray section, which shows there's an extra information or options area. And we will look into some of these shortly. All gray cells you can see on the screen are input cells you can change. These inputs can range from numbers, text, or drop-down selections. An important thing to know is that cells that allow number input can often also be used to calculate things, just like in Excel. For example, say we have a 100 mil thick wall on this roof beam, and we know the density of this wall is 5 kilonewtons per meters cubed. However, this input here only allows a KPA input, so we'll first need to convert the density from kilonewtons per meters cubed to kilonewtons per meters squared. There are a few ways we can convert it, but in this example we will convert it using the width of our wall, being 100 millimeters thick. This way we can use the, when we use the load width, it will be based on the height of the wall. So rather than manually calculating it ourselves, we can use the input cell to do this for, for us. By going into the dead load input cell here, going equals 0.1 times 5 kilonewtons per meters cubed. What this will do is we'll calculate it into the KPA that we want. Next, we need to put in the load width. In this case, with our wall being one meter high, we'll put in one meter. This will then calculate out to the right and give us our kilonewtons per meter on the roof beam. Another thing we can do to make this more clear on our computation is rename this dead load to say wall dead load. This can be done on the right over here under the dead load description. In here, we'll type wall dead load. And as you can see on the left, it's updated that name to represent it. To give even further clarity to our wall load, we can also insert a comment to describe how we got the KPA shown. This can be done by right clicking near or on the load and going insert comment. This will bring up a box that we can input some text in. In this case, we'll just say it's a 100 mil thick wall of 5 kilonewtons per meter cubed density. We can then resize it and move it around as we'd like. This will also appear on the printed comps. These kinds of features are present in many of the toolkit modules and can be used in similar ways. The next thing we'll look at is adding linked reactions. Say you're designing a roof beam and that roof beam has another roof beam spanned into it. You'd then want the reaction from the second roof beam as a point load on your first roof beam. One way you could do it is manually enter the point load yourself. However, if you then later had to change the design in some way for the second roof beam, you would also have to change the point load as well. Instead, what you can do is link the reaction in automatically. To do this, we will open up a new roof beam. And call it roof beam 2. To add the reaction into this roof beam 2, we'll go to the beam it spans onto, being roof beam 1. And in the point load section, we will highlight all of the point load cells, right click, and go add reaction. This will bring up an interface that allows you to select from all valid members with a reaction to add one in. As there's only one valid member, roof beam 2 is the only one we can choose from. The next thing to select is the end the reaction is taken from. 
As roof beam 2 is uniformly loaded, it doesn't really matter in this case, but we will pretend it spans into RB1 on the right end. So we'll pick that and go OK. Do note that for double span members, you also get the center support reaction as an option. Once you've clicked OK, it will automatically add the reaction loads and also insert a comment that details what the reaction comprises of. You can delete this without affecting anything. At the moment, we get a dead load reaction of 0.67 or 0.7. And if I were to change the dead load in RB2 from 0.4 to 0.9, bringing the reaction up to 1.34, you will see this change is also reflected in the roof beam reaction on roof beam 1. If we wanted to, we could then add another reaction on top of this by doing the same process as before. For demonstration, I'll use the same roof beam too. As you can see, the reaction loads have doubled and the inserted comment has updated to reflect this. Going even further, you could also add your own point load value inside the cell by adding any kilonewton value like so, plus one. You can see now that there's now an extra row in the comment showing that one kilonewton we've added on the dead load cell. You could do this in a number of ways for any of those point load cells. This reactions feature can be applied on a range of member types, including floor, roof, and propped beams, member designs, columns, and even the 3D analysis of structural toolkit. One question you might have with this module is, what if I have two or three point loads at different locations? As the point load position only gives one input, what you would need to do is use the member design modules with the linked analysis. We can also use the linked reactions as shown here, but this is something we'll go into in another video. When designing in timber and steel, you sometimes might want alternative designs of each material. For example, you might have designed a very large timber member and you want to give the builder a steel alternative. Or you did try to design the member in timber and it didn't work at the sizes you wanted, so you needed to switch to steel. Rather than create a new member and input all the loads again from scratch, you can use a feature called timber to steel or steel to timber. To use this, you either need a timber or steel beam design open, then switch to the member tab at the top, and you will see a timber to steel or steel to timber option, depending on which material you started in. If I will then to convert this RB1 into steel, it will open up a new member being in steel, transfer all the loads and comments, including the reaction I inserted, and then ask me if I want to keep or delete the original. In this case, I will keep it. It will then give the new member the same name, but with an alt at the end of it. Do be aware, however, that as the steel and timber member designs are different in their methodology, there will be certain inputs like the alpha M. You'll need to check yourself whenever converting. Another thing to note is that if you've used the member you're converting as a linked reaction somewhere, you won't get the option to delete it. This would be the case with RB2, as I've put its reaction onto RB1. The next thing we will look at are member presets. All modules in Toolkit will have a variety of default input values the moment you open them. You don't have to keep these default values though, as there is a feature called member presets that allows you to create your own sets of default values for the majority of the modules. To show how this is done, I'll create two presets for the timber roof beam. The idea behind these presets is they'll use one of them for designing a sheet roof house and the other for a tiled roof. First, we will create the sheet roof preset. To do this, we'll need to open another timber roof beam. And then change the input values to how we want them to be in the preset. For the sheet roof, I'll keep the dead load the same, but I'll change the centers to 900 span to 3000, have the default member size be an F7 pine for a 190 by 45. And then to save this preset, what we need to do is we go up to the member tab at the top, use the drop down under presets and click create. 
what I'll then name this preset is sheet. While we're still here, I'll also create the tiled roof preset. I'll put in a dead load of 0.9 kPa, change the centers to 600, restraints to 600, and also change the default member type to be an F17. As I did before, I go to the top up here, create, and save it as tiled. Now we need to manage our preset, which will determine what preset is used when we next open the timber roof bank. To do this, click the project tab, and then click preset manager. In here, we will see the two presets we made with tiled having a tick next to it. This means it is currently the active preset. And if I were to open another timber roof beam, its default values would be used for the input cells. To change the active preset, you can either double click on the preset you want, or click it once and then select activate. The original values can also be set by clicking use default, which will show none of our presets as being active. For this example, I'll have the sheet roof be active and then open a timber roof beam. As you can see, it's default values of those of our sheet preset, being the span of three meters, then we've also got our 190 by 45 of seven pine. This feature can be used in a variety of ways, such as creating default designs that are used frequently, or for designing with different material types like I've done here. To create a preset for any other design module, just follow the same steps that I've done. If you want to transfer your presets to another computer or give them to someone else, you can use the export and import feature at the top. Additionally, if you want to edit the values of the preset you have, firstly, make sure that the module in question is open and that the current values are the preset values. This can be done by either opening it as the active preset or in the member tab with the module open using the select dropdown, select in the preset you want to change, and then click apply. What you can then do is change the values as you wish. In this case, I'll just change the tile to have a span of 3.5 meters instead. And then what you want to do is click the presets dropdown and update. This will then update your preset to those new default values. The final thing we look at in this video are the member and reaction summaries. You'd usually use these at the end of a project and are found under the document tab at the top. The member summary will provide a summary of the size and span of all members. In this case, you can see our five roof bands with their size and spans. The member summary can often be useful for filling in a schedule in your drawings. If needed, the member summary can also be exported into a spreadsheet. This can be done by clicking the drop down on member summary and clicking spreadsheet. As I already have it open, it will ask me if I want to keep or remove the existing one. In this case, I'll just remove and regenerate it. This will then generate it into a spreadsheet. If you need to know how to access the member summary in file format, all you need to do is right click the section that the summary is in and click open folder. This will open up a file explorer where you can access your Excel file. The reaction summary acts in a similar way to the member summary. It will show all of the reactions at each end of all your members. It will split up the loads into the wind, dead and live, and also provide a section at the bottom that shows if any linked reactions have been applied and where they linked to. These reactions can be useful for designing columns or footings. Like with the member summary, this can also be exported into a spreadsheet. That about covers the main useful features in Structure Toolkit. The next video will go through analysis light which all users on subscription have access to. Analysis Lite gives you a 2D space in which you can draw out models up to four nodes and analyze them with complex loading scenarios. Feel free to check out our website and our other videos for more tutorials and help with using this software. If you have any questions, please contact our support team via email or by calling us. Thanks for watching.